recognition of themselves. The subjectivities of the two individuals thus serve as a kind of infinity mirror, an endless recursion of reflections. Prior to this encounter, the individual subjects lacked what we might call a higher order sense of selfhood. They simply existed in the world, but now, due to the presence of the other, the subjects now find themselves seeing themselves through how they are seen by another person. The subjectivity of the individual has come to be defined and contrasted with the other, through which he is now forced to see himself. The individuals are infuriated by this, by the thought that they might be seen as inferior to the other, or that the other's gaze might somehow make them see themselves as less than they believe themselves to be. And as such, the two engage in a battle for dominance. One will ultimately prevail, becoming the master, and the other will be forced to become the slave. But the story doesn't end with that. In fact, here we have only the beginning. For now that the master holds power over the slave, the master's entire sense of identity comes to be defined by his contrast with the slave. The master doesn't need to work or self-reflect. He needn't be cunning or resourceful. The slave, on the other hand, comes to develop ways of seeing himself independently of his relation to the master. The slave lacks the blunt power of the master, and so the slave becomes clever, frugal, efficient, and moreover, vengeful. 